Greetings, uh, welcome to Product One's technical web series. Today we are going to look at uh, mechanisms inside Creo Parametric. So this is probably one of the most liked uh, videos or demos, if I can put it like that, because of uh, most of the people that I've actually demoed to, they always want to see this particular demo. So the actual scenario here is that I'm going to showcase what is possible with the base package of uh, uh, Creo Parametric and particularly mechanism design extension. There is one or two options that you only get when you having the mechanism design option and I am going to allude to those uh, a bit later. So let's get started. So now what I have here is this bike. So firstly, I'm just going to add one part just to show you how easy it is to add mechanisms into your design in Creo Parametric. So if we look at this, I have a component and all I have to do is tell what sort of, tell Creo what sort of connection do I want. I actually am looking at having a pin connection and just to fix my translation, this is what I'm actually going to do. So I'm going to say this is now the point which I'm trying to fix. While I'm still on this, I can say now, let me add another connection and we're going to make this one a ball connection. And I've just completed this mechanism. So this is what I have at the moment. The key benefits of using Creo Parametric is that within the same user interface, you can actually move from one application to the next. So I'm now with mechanisms. I didn't have to move away from Creo and, and so forth. So the most important part that you need to remember is the following. So I need to make an initial condition. So I'm going to take a snapshot now of what I have here. So now that I've actually taken a snapshot, I'm going to make that my initial condition. So I'm going to pick the snapshot, the one that I've just generated. Now that's my initial condition. So I can also add some key measures. So that snapshot will use it a bit later. So I can add some measures. For an example, I can say I want to measure the velocity. I can even call it swing velocity. I can say I want to add the swing velocity of, let's say, this area here. Okay? So I'm now interested in getting the swing velocity of that swing arm. So what does this all mean? That means that I can now create a mechanism. In fact, I can even make this a dynamic study. I can even make it a static study. So dynamic analysis, they will need a license of mechanism design option. All right. So I'm going to say for this one, I want to enable gravity. And I'll pick that initial condition. And I can even pick the timestamp. Let's make it, in fact, let's make it 1.5. Okay. Now, if I run this, it's basically going to show how this model will behave as it stands. So I can say... How about I pick that swing arm and look at what is happening to that movement. And this is basically the graphical representation of that swing arm. So any engineer will know that in cases like this, we need to take the energy out of the system. And you can only do that with things like springs or dampers. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to add a spring here in this location and in that location. I can specify my spring stiffness. I can actually uh, specify even the diameter of the cores. I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. So what I will do here is I'll also add a damper. damper. So we're going to have maybe 2% damping of the entire system. So that's basically what I have now. So if I were to take the same analysis now, on the same conditions and now run it, this is basically how it behaves. You can tell that the spring now is actually taking the energy 
out of the system and this is how the graph actually looks so we finished the first part so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assign the springs in the front as well and the beauty about this is I can actually copy and paste uh, mechanism features like the spring for an example so all I'm going to do in the front is just assign the spring so let's take uh, in this case that the spring is actually going to be the same one so I'm also going to assign a spring on the other side of my assembly and just like that I've got the two springs in front so the damping however let's make it vary a little bit so let's make this damping to be 0.75 and we're just going to pick those two points and yet again, I can copy and paste that onto the other side. So I've got damping in the front and damping uh, at the back. So what I have here is basically the center of gravity where the engine is actually going to be. And I also have the center of gravity of the rider. This is where the rider is actually going to be. So I'm just going to do a quick variation here. Or announcement in a sense that at the moment this is about 60 kg so what I need to do is add the engine weight so I don't have to physically have the engine there I just say take this and assign mass properties so let's say the engine is about 60 kg give or take and then maybe let's take the rider to be about let's say 100 kilograms okay so that's basically what I have now if I verify this you can actually tell that I'm having something like 228 kilograms which is more or less uh, how the bike will weigh with the person on top all right so we finished the first part now we'll go out of mechanisms I'm not gonna even say that analysis that I have here and then I'm going to put back the covers. So, and I'm going to take this bike and put it on the test track and actually make it move. So how do I do that? Firstly, I already have a test track assembly. All that I have here is just a piece of plank representing obviously the road. So if I take this into mechanism, I can generate First of all, a snapshot. So I'm generating this snapshot. This is basically where the bike is. And now I'm going to generate an initial condition. So I'm going to pick the new snapshot, but I'm going to do something unique with this uh, initial condition. I'm going to give the bike a velocity in the X direction. I'm going to make it 3000 millimeters per second. And I'm also going to add a deacceleration of maybe minus 20 okay so that's basically what I have now so it's time for me to link the bike to the road and how you do that you use a cam connection so I'm gonna take that and link it to this here I'll even specify certain boundary conditions if you like I can say, you know what, how about you enable liftoff and I can specify now coefficients of friction for the road surface. I've just tied in the back wheel. We'll have to repeat this again for the front surface. So this is what I have. I'm going to select now that and just like before we specify vertic uh, front and back references. And of course, the conditions has to be exactly the same. So I'm specifying now my coefficients of friction. And just like that, I'm having my bike linked to the road. Now it's time for me to see how this will behave. Remember now the spring and the, the mass of the rider and of course the, the engine will come into play as well. So I'm going to say take here and put in a dynamic analysis and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, 
enable gravity and also enable friction. I can even change things like the frame count, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify the new initial condition and I'm going to say make this maybe 1.8 and all I have to do now is if I run this, just need to put it here, if I run this now, this is how it's going to uh, behave. It applies the brakes and you can even see the springs actually come into play. And just like that, and of course, you can save this as an AVI, uh, as an MPEG or whatever, just to show people. So, and let's just play it again, just like that. All right, that is it for this week. If you like uh, the video, please uh, leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, thank you very much. Goodbye.